Arthur, what would it take to make the best handheld? Replaceable batteries? More. Two trackpads? More. A fancy kickstand? More. A discrete GPU? Probably. Wait, what? Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a good one. You heard me right. A handheld with a discrete, dedicated graphics card. How on earth is this even going to be possible? Man, my head's still spinning from the announcement, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. At the end of June, a and &E CEO Arthur unveiled the a and &E Next 2, the world's first Windows gaming handheld with a discrete GPU. Despite some early onset confusion, mainly due to some language barriers, Arthur has come forward and come up with a little bit of clarification. He's floating two different options around, one being a removable and replaceable GPU module similar to something we've seen from the likes of the Framework laptop. The second solution has a dedicated GPU on the motherboard, just like we see with laptops, but they do have a removable battery. While both of these options are still on the drawing board and we haven't really heard much about it, man, my mind is still exploding that we're going to get a dedicated graphics card inside of a handheld. With this announcement, there are two variants to the A&Neo Next 2, one based off of an Intel and the other with an AMD solution. For Intel, they're going to be using an Alder Lake mobile part and an Intel Arc-based mobile GPU, likely the A370M that rocks 35 watts. Ain't nobody got time for that. But today, I'm going to be focusing more on the AMD variant, mainly because here on the channel we've talked about and we understand how these parts perform, and in fact, I have some hardware that I can get my hands on. In powering the device, a &E is sticking to a well-known Ryzen 6000 series mobile CPU. We don't know exactly which processor they're going to be using, but it's highly likely that they're going to either use the 6600U or the 6800U. This CPU also has a built-in GPU with the Radeon 660 or 680M, but that will not be the primary graphics solution. Of course, the star of the show is going to be its GPU solution, and it's going to be powered by the latest RDNA 2 mobile GPUs. The current speculation is that we're going to see something in the 50 watt range, such as a 6500M or a 6600M. Of course, a and &E remains tight lipped on this detail, though it is a starting point for our minds to ponder. So how on earth is a device like this even possible? <laughs> right at the top of my head, I've got three major problems with this device. Given the rough specs of the device, we're looking at anywhere between 65 and 100 watts of power consumption that the a and &E Next 2 is going to consume, and that is absolutely absurd. That's in the same ballpark as some entry to mid-range gaming laptops. Even if we can cram that amount of hardware into an 8-inch form factor, battery life, whoo, it's going to be extremely low. Even with the largest batteries and the latest handheld devices, you're looking at right around one hour of playtime. With power consumption ramping upwards of 50 watts, we always have to remember we actually have to cool the device. Looking back at the gaming laptop example, sure, a solution could be possible, but there needs to be sufficient air volume and heat sink contact area to pull the heat off of the device. But if a and &E manages to get a dense enough heat sink as well as two fans that are able to pump some pretty high static pressures, I don't think it's impossible. Heck, this server heat sink that I got here from my old job, it's pretty dense itself and it's able to cool a 100 watt power supply. Granted, it's about two pounds of solid copper. Given the already high price tag for those top shelf handheld devices out there, I'm guessing that this device, the a and &E Next 2, is going to cost anywhere upwards of about 1200 USD. And judging by similarly spec'd gaming laptops, those cost anywhere between $800 and $1600 US. Despite the weird form factor, this device, it could be well suited for a true PC replacement. But if you're looking for a mobile gaming system that could double as a desktop replacement with a USB hub, this a and &E Next 2 is definitely a good contender compared to the GPD WinMax 2. So you might be asking yourself, Turk, how on earth is this actually going to perform? Well, Arthur's not the only madman here. I've got 14 years of product development experience under my belt. So let's uh, take a look at the shelf and see what we got. 
Now, the first thing I've got here is the Asus Zephyrus Duo 16. This is their latest model that's packed with the 6900HX. The 6900HX is a higher frequency 8-core offering from AMD with their Ryzen 6000 series, and it's very similar to what the AOK Zoe and the other high-end handhelds have coming to market. It also has the Radeon 680M, though it is pushing a faster clock speed compared to the 6800U. But since we've got this laptop and ASUS has all the bells and whistles to get it overclocked, we're going to be able to tune its TDP ranges to see just how far these APUs are able to push themselves. Of course, we have to throw some dedicated desktop hardware at the problem, and my hacking deck is here to save us once again. It has evolved since you've last seen it here on the channel, of course, with a dedicated graphics card. The benefit of using desktop hardware here is I can dial in my TDP for both the CPU and GPU to try and hit the aggressive TDP targets of the a and Neo Next 2. The CPU will be the 5700G, and I'm going to be cranking it down to 15 watts, a bit more than what the handheld will be using, but it will at least get us in the right ballpark. Now the first graphics card is the 6500 XT. The 6500 XT is not a popular GPU with only 4 gigabytes of VRAM and only 16 RDNA compute units to boot. This GPU shares a lot in common with the 6500M, which is close to the Next 2's final form. However, for a handheld, that is 33% more compute units than the current handheld for only a bit more wattage and power consumption. The 6600 XT, on the other hand, is a bit beefier than the next step up with the 6600M, sporting 32 compute units compared to the mobile's 28. For both of these GPUs, I'm going to be cranking the maximum frequency down significantly in order to keep the overall TDP of the system to around 50 watts, less than the speculated a and Neo Next 2's TDP. All of my testing today is going to be running at 1200p, because if you look at the spec sheet from previous videos, that seems to be the most popular resolution for the next generation handhelds. Sorry, Ain, you're the odd man out. As for detail settings, I'm going to be sticking to either low or medium detail settings, because that seems to give us the best performance with our handheld devices. But with this much horsepower, and as you'll see in the charts, there's definitely going to be some room to increase the eye candy just a bit. Starting with Forza Horizon 5, we have the Radeon 680M APU on the top half of the screen at its various TDPs, and the bottom we have the dedicated GPUs. For the integrated graphics solution, as we increase past the default 28 watts of the part, we only manage to gain an additional 13% of performance with an increase of over 61% of power consumption. Even worse, we don't gain any additional performance when increasing the TDP to 60 watts, suggesting that we're at the max that this little APU can dish out. Shifting gears to the discrete GPU, we get an amazing 53% performance improvement while only increasing our power consumption window by 12 watts. Now that might seem like a lot, but holy cow, that is a lot of performance for so little wattage. In this use case, the 6500 XT manages to hit 2145 megahertz on its GPU clock rate, which is just a hair shy of the 6500M's game clock speed. I think we hit the nail right on the head here, my friends. Interestingly enough though, the 6600 XT at a similar wattage, I had to dial back the 6600 XT to 793 MHz. <laughs> you heard me right, MHz, in order to maintain the same wattage. I do expect that the 6600M would perform similarly, though not at such drastic of clock speeds. Forza is a DirectX 12 title, so what happens when we switch over to a GPU-heavy Vulkan title with Red Dead Redemption 2? With the popular 6800U's integrated GPU, we see practically no performance scaling with the wattage increases, suggesting that this Radeon 680M needs more compute units in order to get an edge. And that's where the 6500 XT at 47 watts is able to save the day. Though less than 60 FPS at a considerable wattage, we gain nearly 50% performance improvement at similar conditions of the APU. 
And as expected, if we increase our compute unit count to 32 with the 6600 XT, we gain 72% performance improvement over the 45 watt APU. Vulcan scales very well, so if a and Neo can address our earlier issues, this seems like a lucrative improvement. Let's fast forward 178 years and augment our AAA experience with Cyberpunk 2077. Our current next-gen handheld see playable experiences at 33 FPS at about 28 watts, but increasing our wattage of the APU only nets us an additional 6 FPS at 1200p and low detail settings. But if we go with a dedicated graphics solution, a 61% performance improvement only costs us 50% more power. Cyberpunk even scales fairly well with the higher spec mobile laptop GPUs, 5 additional FPS for 6 additional watts. I also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I got similar results as the other games we saw, so let's go ahead and average it all out. Our 680M integrated graphics solution performs optimally at 28 watts, getting us above 30 FPS in this sample at native 1200p. That is truly outstanding. Unfortunately for the 680M, increasing our power to the APU only nets us 13% improvement in performance, a 61% power consumption increase. Ooh. But if we take that same power increase with a discrete graphics solution like the 6500M, we could get 59% performance improvement. Now that is some next, next generation thinking. Now that I've inundated you with a whole bunch of numbers, let's take a step back real quick and see what we've been able to achieve. We've been able to validate that with a discrete graphics card solution at similar wattage levels, we are able to outperform what our current generation APUs are able to deliver, all at the cost of some additional wattage. Keep in mind, we have to account for the screen, the RAM, and other system components in our power consumption calculation, but that's effectively constant in our comparisons today. Running at 45 watts plus some change, a 65 watt hour battery can easily power this type of device for at least an hour. And given the target form factor, swappable batteries, and the portability, this type of device isn't all that unreasonable. Let's not forget, but a and Neo has the ability to limit the power ceiling of the devices even beyond what we've tested today. Though I would have to do a few more tests, it's not unreasonable to think a 30 watt variant with a 15 watt 6600U and a 15 watt 6500M couldn't perform better than the 6800U's APU. But let's level ourselves in reality for just a second. All the things we've talked about today are pure speculation and it's based off of some rather vague information from the CEO. I have no idea how they're actually going to implement a swappable GPU solution, and I have no idea how they're planning on actually cooling 40 or more watts inside of a handheld device. But what I can say for certain is that this type of device is truly pushing the limits of product development, further blurring the lines between specifications and integrations. Given a problem in a set of tools, a and Neo aims to shatter our expectations for future generations of handheld devices. And with RDNA 3 and future architectures around the corner, this type of device will pave the way for an amazing handheld future. And hopefully not drain my bank account. But that's all I have to say about the A and Neo Next 2. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything or if there's anything that we should revisit in the future once we get a few more bits of information from Arthur. As always, y'all can follow me over on Twitter at the Turk in order to get the latest memes and all of my different product reviews getting linked as soon as they get posted. And go check out the community tab. I'll be posting some polls over there to see what you guys want to see for our next video. But as always, thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you have a good one. We'll catch you in the next one.